Orbital Gardens, this is Mission Control. We are confirming acquisition of your signal. You are live in 5, 4, 3, 2... Hello and welcome to episode 46 of Gardeners of the Galaxy, the podcast for all of the sentient beings in the universe who have a passion for plants. I'm Emma the Space Gardener and I will be your host as we explore gardening on Earth and beyond. The year is 2022 and all across the United Kingdom something extraordinary is afoot. Unboxed Creativity in the UK is a -a once-in-a-lifetime celebration of creativity involving ten awe-inspiring projects. About Us was a spectacular open-air live show and multimedia installation that took people on a wild ride through 13.8 billion years of life, the universe and everything in it, from the Big Bang to the present day. Story Trails is a deep dive into our collective history, a magical AR and VR immersion in the hidden histories that have shaped 15 UK towns and cities. Dream Machine is a -a one-of-a-kind experience that leads you through an immersive environment of light and sound that's as rich and dazzling as any digital simulation, yet created by you. This world will come from within, providing a magical insight into the astonishing power of our own minds and inviting you to stop and think about what it means to be you. Galwad, A Story from Our Future, is a multi-platform, multilingual story set in a possible future world of 2052, on TV, on digital, and on location across Wales. Green Space, Dark Skies will bring 20,000 people together at dusk to create artworks of light in beautiful countryside locations as part of a UK-wide celebration of the great outdoors. The project is inspired by the 90th anniversary of the 1932 Kinder Scout Mass Trespass, a pivotal event in the movement to secure access to the countryside for ordinary people that influenced the creation of the UK's network of national parks. Our Place in Space recreates the solar system as an epic 8.5 kilometre sculpture trail, exploring what it means to live life on Earth. It's already been to Derry and Belfast and is currently installed in Cambridge and will have a final installation in Ulster in the autumn. Tour de Moon is a cosmic journey into the possibilities of tomorrow, live shows, nightlife, digital experiences and more, created in collaboration with the moon. Pollinations is a magical city centre forest garden, a vast oasis of plants and flowers blossoming and blooming in Birmingham in September. Up in the sky, giant architectural trees will drink rainwater captured in the canopy. Down on the ground, there'll be music, spoken word, tours, light shows, design workshops and multi-sensory experiences. Pollinations is a joyous celebration of beauty and diversity, ending with a dazzling all-day, all-night party in the park. A decommissioned North Sea oil platform has just arrived for a new life as a major art installation in Western Supermare. Sea Monster will be a vivid reminder of our industrial past and a fantastic symbol of our journey towards a sustainable future. The concept art for Sea Monster shows it as a lush hanging garden, complete with a waterfall, so I'm hoping to be able to go and see that once it opens to visitors later this month. And finally, a major Grow Your Own Food initiative is taking place across Scotland this summer and reimagining harvest for the 21st century. The idea behind Dandelion is for people across Scotland to sow and grow crops of every shape and size, then come together at harvest time to cook, eat and enjoy, because with Dandelion, anything grows. Dandelion is an amazing project bringing together gardening, art and music, cooking and community spirit. And so I'm thrilled that our guest for today's show is Fiona Burnett, the lead on Dandelion's growing team. Fiona is also a Professor of Applied Plant Pathology at SRUC, Scotland's Rural College, meaning she is, in essence, a plant doctor. We'll be hearing from Fiona in just a minute, but I'd like to give a big Gardens of the Galaxy shout out to the patrons who support the show. By becoming a patron, you can support the show and get early access to episodes plus exclusive bonus content. Visit patreon.com forward slash Gardens of the Galaxy to find out more. Hello, Fiona. Welcome to Gardens of the Galaxy. It's great to have you on the show today. Thank you for the invitation, Emma. It's great to be here. <laughs> So, I mean, you're working on a fantastic project called Dandelion, and it's a whole sort of six month project in, revolving around Grow Your Own this summer. And it has been billed as Reimagining Harvest for the 21st Century. So tell us a little bit about what Dandelion actually involves. Well, I mean, like you say, it's a huge and complex project so at its heart it's this so grow and share idea that as many people as possible get growing um, and then enjoy a harvest 
uh, you know, at the end of the of the season. So re-engaging with food. But what I'm loving about it, I mean, I come at this from the growing and the science side because, you know, my job is kind of plant doctoring and, you know, supporting crop growth. Yeah. But it's the engagement with, you know, musicians and people looking at the traditions of harvest or developing new food and recipes and things. So that idea of kind of growing not just the crops but growing the communities and growing the food and the music is is lovely and makes this project very very unique yes because you're one of the things you're doing across the summer as people are growing their plants is you're having festivals music festivals art and culture and, and all kinds of things aren't you oh there's so many strands we've got hundreds of schools engaged so they are doing a schools program i've got 86,000 children growing potatoes, which is another <laughs> huge strand. We've given away 80,000 plants in free-for-alls, so at little mini festivals, so that people can pick up free plants and, you know, get growing and join in. There's unexpected gardens throughout Scotland, so in a slightly subversive, they're kind of in unexpected places or derelict land or you know unused spaces so that's another lovely piece and then you're right there's these huge festivals where we've got music and talks and there's been new songs commissioned we've got pop-up potting sheds with all sorts of people doing fun things so there's a couple of those really big festivals as well so yeah and I've probably forgotten something let's say <laughs> there's so many lovely strands to the dandelion yeah but people can have a look at the dandelion website if they want to see everything that's involved mm. and what's going on so I will put a link to that in the show notes for you I mean so for me one of the most striking features the thing that I first came across are what you're calling cubes of perpetual light which are little mini vertical farms and there are quite a few of them aren't there <laughs> yes, more than quite a few. Um, so, yeah, the idea that kind of vertical farming is kind of slightly futuristic, it's controlled growing. Um, so the contrast, you know, these very controlled, beautifully lit cubes where you can layer up the plants and grow them very quickly, kind of contrast with the dirty growing, if you like, in soil. So, yeah, we've got 114 of the school growing cubes out with schools. And then 55 of these cubes of perpetual light, which, you know, they'll be beautifully, you know, filled with plants um, and the colours are amazing. But those sort of particularly, you know, the ones that they're badging as the cubes of perpetual light kind of respond to music and have music installations as well. So, you know, I just think that's an amazing piece <laughs> of kind of introducing people to the idea of how crops could be grown in the future and for me it's not an either or you know we can do both there are lots of spaces where we could seriously use cubes like this or vertical farms to transform you know un unused buildings or brownfield sites and do that as well as you know the kind of productive growing uh, in fields and, and crops and if you get onto your kind of gardening in the galaxy piece, <laughs> then it will certainly be along the lines of these controlled environment vertical farming type installations so yeah the future is here <laughs> it's amazingly beautiful i mean um dandelion put out a, a like almost like a trailer um a very cinematic trailer at the start of the of the uh, of the project mm -hmm. um about a guy called is it patrick um who takes one across to uh, to um, a very remote island but there's also one on the back of a sort of recumbent bike which is going all round scotland and i think that's amazing and it's beautiful but i do feel sorry for the lady who's like cycling up a hill pedaling up hill <laughs> yeah. sure. but yes i mean this just they're going everywhere it's brilliant so what sort of plants are growing in these cubes of perpetual light? What are you giving away? So for that, we've tried to do a mix of kind of cut and come again, lettuce and salad, because that's a lovely thing that people can eat now and, you know, keep eating and picking. Yeah. Um, we've also got lemon balm as just being, again, they, they grow from tiny plants into lovely, big, beautiful plants, and they can be used in lots of fun recipes. Yeah. Things like legumes, so sort of runner beans that grow very quickly. And again, that introduces the idea of, you know, more protein in crops. And then chives are a sort of perennial favourite. Again, they're great fun. They're easy to grow. 
you can imagine the difficulty of managing 80,000 plants to give away. Yes. But chives don't mind a bit of a haircut and then we can <laughs> let them come again and, and keep giving them away over the summer. Yeah. So that's the type of thing. But I mean, the number of crops that can be grown in that way expand all the time. So, you know, professionally, people are growing fruit and tomatoes and trees and potatoes and all sorts of things in that kind of system. Yeah. I mean, you did talk about, you mentioned potatoes and the kids. Is that is that the big tatty experiment? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the idea of like kids and potatoes? Well, they're so easy to grow and they're, they're fun. I mean, that magic when you tip potatoes out at the end of the season and you yeah. get your harvest. But yes, so they're growing. We've got a big piece around the kind of growing media because, you know, kind of compost and peat based compost, are, of course, a thing. So kind of promoting sustainable growing media and growing in soil when and where you can. But this was very much about this isn't about people with existing gardening experience. This was very much about opening it up to, to new growers. Yeah. Um, and then just growing them in whatever. So we're getting lovely stories back about people growing them in all kinds of containers from sort of bag for life um, bags and, you know, barrows and all sorts of fun containers. Uh, and just kind of telling us their experience. So some things go wrong. That's OK. How do you salvage it? How are they getting on? What are they feeding them with? And then really at the end of it, how many did you get? What did they look like? And and how did you share them and, and use them? <laughs> yeah, fabulous. I can imagine there are going to be some like really good community recipes coming out of this later. Yeah. In the yeah. <laughs> OK, the culmination of this is going to be a Scotland wide harvest festival in September. It's going to be a massive, massive celebration of growing in community. Um, and that's you know, sort of like one big party centred around the harvest of these vegetables. But what are you hoping will be the sort of more long term harvest from Dandelion? What are its goals? It's interesting you, you raise that. So kind of the legacy from this, I think, is is really key. So, you know, in the ideal world where we've got much more people growing uh, and engaging. So to keep that going is a really key piece. So. If we think of the cubes, we're looking at the kind of how these will remain in schools for future years and there'll be kind of follow up experiments and things that they can do. So that's a definite piece. And we're going to have a symposium in the autumn where we invite, I think, quite a unique blend of the scientists, the te technical people who produce these cubes, policymakers, traditional growing groups, um, community gardeners, and really look at how we can sort of hand on the dandelion legacy to existing groups to support um, people and keep the kind of networks and communities going that have started this year. The schools will be really core in that. And then the other piece, we've got a lot of our SRUC. So I work for Scotland's Rural College. So our students are forming a, a tatty team this year, supporting growers, which is lovely. And they've been out doing the giveaways. But again, the kind of skills and training that you have around horticulture. So just this year to be highlighting the kind of exciting opportunities that there are around growing and horticulture. There are just so many. So that kind of future piece for me is the really key piece of legacy here that we've got connections now between existing students and the kind of creative people around Scotland that I think will give a kind of, again, a, another lasting network that's just opened up horticulture in a, a new way to new people. Yeah. So that's another really important piece of the legacy for me. Fabulous. OK, so, I mean, have you ever thought about going into space? Has it ever been something? That... <laughs> have you ever thought about growing plants in space? Growing plants in space, not personally. I have no great desire to, to go into space, but people have done it. People have grown plants in space. And in terms of the one I would take, it absolutely has to be the potato. Oh. Um, in fact, I asked a friend, which one do you think I would take? And they knew that it, I would take the potato. You're a big potato fan, are you? I am, I am. And I think it reflects the kind of that growing piece in dandelion that we've got, the potatoes that very much at the core of this. So with a serious head on, I mean, potatoes were actually one of the first plants that were grown in space so it has been done so I know it can be done <laughs> but they're so nutritious so they're one of the few sources of you know carbohydrate that you could actually survive on so that's a kind of a sensible piece 
but I think as well for me they speak of the kind of you know the heritage of Scotland there's lots of kind of traditional harvest stuff around potatoes um so yeah absolutely no question that they would be the ones that I would I would take with me Yes, because I mean, a lot of our seed potatoes are grown in Scotland, aren't they? And this ties in with your your day job of of plant pathology. It's my understanding is that it's because you don't have the aphids um, that spread potato diseases. Is that right? Yeah. No, if you were going to make me choose a particular potato to take to space, it would definitely be a Scottish seed potato. (laughs) Um, Because like you say, they don't carry the same disease burdens and we certainly wouldn't want to carry problems off into space. Yes. I'm probably doing myself out of a job because if you take nice clean potatoes to space, then they won't get the diseases and problems they get at the moment, which is my bread and butter uh, in terms of... (laughs) Well, you say that, but there have been um, plant pathogens on the International Space Station. Um, So, I mean, we take them with us, as you know, we take our microbiome with us, so we can't entirely escape them. So I think you would still have a job in space. Um, Is there a particular variety of of potato that is your favourite? or that you think would do well in space? I think I would probably take something like rooster, which is a lovely red skinned fluffy one that bakes and makes chips. So I displayed <laughs> my weakness for how I like my potatoes there. <laughs> but there's another lovely one that's kind of new at the moment, Mayan gold, which is one of the first of the Scottish seed potatoes that's directly descended from the Peruvian indigenous potato. So I think in terms of taking nice genetics into space, my gold, if I could take two, I would take my gold <laughs> well, and I would take yeah, rooster. I think yeah. we can let you do that. Yeah. I seem to remember something about my gold from a few years ago and I'm trying to, I'm desperately trying to remember, but my memory is not what it used to be these days. Um, it's a lovely golden fleshed one. And like I say, I think this sort of heritage piece mm. is, is a nice, <laughs> a nice angle. So we'll have an old and a new, please. Yeah. <laughs> A touch of Scotland and a, and a touch of yeah. Touch of Peru, yep. ancient Peru. Yes, absolutely fabulous. I think that I think that's a great choice, and you, you can bring your potato varieties to my orbital greenhouse, and we'll have a go at growing them. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Fiona, and talking about dandelion. It's a fantastic project, and people can find more about it on the dandelion website. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Thanks, Emma. Yeah, no, it's been great to talk about Dandelion and just put that open invitation to join in out there. And yeah, yeah, people can look at the website. They can get a feel for all the loads of strands and bits that are in it. So thanks, Emma. Brilliant. Thank you. That's it for this episode. Thanks again to my patrons for supporting the show. And don't forget that you can sign up for the Gardeners of the Galaxy newsletter for new episode alerts and bonus astrobotany content. You'll find that link and more details about Dandelion on my website, theunconventionalgardener.com. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Orbital Gardens, this is Mission Control. Confirming termination of your signal. I've got a joke for you. Why is Yoda so good at gardening? Because he has a green thumb.